Welcome to the video edition of JDC Diabetes Gems. This month, the question is, what is HbA1c? If you ask me, what is HbA1c? My answer will be, glycated hemoglobin or glycosylated hemoglobin or the so-called A1c is the single most important investigation of the diagnosis of diabetes and during the course of treatment for diabetes. HbA1c denotes the average of the past three months blood glucose value. If you are using a glucometer for the determination of fasting blood glucose or the postprandial blood glucose, the glucometer of course is very very good and is accurate but will give only the blood glucose of that point of time. Whereas the glycated hemoglobin or the HbA1c will help you determine whether the diabetes control over a period of time is normal and again HbA1c in a so-called normal individual will help diagnose early diabetes or pre-diabetes or will help diagnose or confirm the diagnosis of diabetes. Let us look at one of the HbA1c reports. Here you have a patient where the HbA1c is 11 percentage. And nowadays we report HbA1c in terms of EAG or estimated average glucose. And HbA1c of 11, when it gets translated to EAG, will be equivalent to 269 milligrams per deciliter. So it definitely means to the patient that an HbA1c of 11 percentage denotes uncontrolled diabetes over the last three months. The average blood glucose in milligram per deciliter during the last three months used to be 269 milligram percentage. An HbA1c of 6 is equivalent to 126 milligram percentage according to the new studies. So in treatment of diabetes, patients and the diabetes team should be bothered about controlling the HbA1c, bringing it below 7 percentage if possible. Remember, the normal A1c for each subject is determined by the treating doctor and the dietitian, the pharmacist and the team. The reason being, an HbA1c normal varies from person to person and the control can be very aggressive in the absence of multiple comorbid illnesses. But in a person who is very old, with long history of uncontrolled diabetes, with a dozen complications, then probably we will be happy with an SBO1C of 7.5 or 8 percentage. But in a young individual with a recent history of onset of diabetes, without any complications, aggressive management to achieve an A1C, say below 5.7 or 5.5 will be the best. But if you ask me how you diagnose diabetes or how you diagnose pre-diabetes with the help of an HbA1c value, then an HbA1c value of 5.7 to 6.4 is pre-diabetes and an HbA1c of 6.5 percentage is confirmatory of the presence of diabetes. So when you see your SV1C is going up, it denotes onset of diabetes and also an A1C of 6 percentage or above can be a marker of future coronary artery disease. Is it easy to look at an SV1C value? Of course, SV1C or glycated hemoglobin can be done in most of the laboratories. But there are certain limitations. HbA1c, if it has to be very, very accurate, should be performed in a very good laboratory 
and there is something called national glycohemoglobin standardization program if not you may get a false a1c value since this p1c is a very very sensitive value you should make sure that you do it in standard machines and the gold standard like SPLC method. So next time when you visit your diabetes treatment team, ask for the SPA1C result and discuss with them how good is your SPA1C and how much low you can go in your control of blood sugars. See you next month. Bye.